this is going to be my first video ever since I have this little setup. Ignore the poor cable management. The setup's not done, but as a little sneak peek, by the end of November, there will be a whole entire office and desk setup tour on this channel of this room, what I've been working in over the past, what, five, six months I've been here? So stay tuned for that because I know a lot of you have been asking for it. But let's get into talking about why you all clicked on this video and that is computer science terminology. Basically, if you're entering this field, there are a few words, buzzwords, or just regular knowledge words that you need to know in this industry. Some of them are very basic, and that's what this video is going to cover a lot, but I have a lot of terminology that I want to discuss, and I'm not sure if it'll fit all in one video. So make sure to subscribe if you care to see part two and potentially part three, depending on how stretched out I make these videos for the rest of this computer science terminology series. I think it's only appropriate for the first term to be computer science. What is computer science? Computer science is a science that deals with theories and methods and processing information on a digital computer. It is also the design of computer hardware and software and the applications of a computer. Or in layman's terms, is a study of the principles and use of computers. In order to understand computer science, you kind of need to understand a computer, and I mean, don't get me wrong, everybody knows what a computer is, but a good way to put it into words for us who are entering in the field of computer science and software engineering is that a computer is a machine that performs computations based on instructions. Instructions, that's an important word. A computer is made up of two components, hardware and software. Hardware is the physical components of a computer. The best way that I learned every little piece of a computer is building mine right there, myself. I think I did that about four years ago. And I did all of the studying and all of the work figuring out why I should get what CPU for my usage, graphics cards, storage, memory, cooling, all of that stuff, all inside of a computer. The best way for you to learn it is actually putting yourself in the shoes of someone who needs to build a computer because you'll take everything into consideration before dumping, what, $1,000, $1,500 into a computer? At least I do. I make sure I do all the research before I spend that much money. So that's a good way to learn the hardware of a computer. Software, on the other hand, is not a physical component. It's basically a set of instructions for the hardware. You can think of these instructions as files that are saved in your computer because every time you open something like Adobe Premiere, everything you do is sending instructions back and forth between the hardware. The software or the instructions aren't in English or any other spoken language. It is a programming language. The language that is used for different types of software varies, but that's essentially how we are able to set instructions for the software to present and to do what we need it to do. Or basically, just to sum all that up, hardware is something that you can physically touch and software is the instructions for the hardware. Since we're on the topic of software, let's talk about program. With a lot of misconceptions, a lot of different words that really kind of mean the same thing. That is, program is basically a piece of software, or you can think of it as an application. It is a file saved on your computer, written in a programming language, filled with instructions to tell your hardware what to do. In our world, we don't call instructions instructions, we call instructions code. Code is a bunch of words and well, well, basically this. This is code, and this is written using a programming language. So you can think of code as the instructions, programming language is what you write the instructions with, and everything combined is a software application or a program. The first thing they'll teach you in any computer science degree is computer hardware. That's why I emphasize understanding all of the components within a computer because you need to learn all of that before you learn programming to be an efficient programming and actually understanding what you're doing. So let's talk about the six main components that make up a computer's hardware. We have the central processing unit or the CPU. We have the main memory. We have secondary storage. We have input output devices. We have the network and we have the bus. The CPU is the brain of the computer. It executes instructions such as code in a program. The main memory, also known as the random access memory, or you may know it as RAM for short, that's used to store the code from your program and it stores the data that your code is operating on while the program is actively running. For example, when you open an application such as Adobe Premiere, the code to run Adobe Premiere loads into the main memory. Then you have your secondary storage that stores your program and data when it's not in use. And in order to do any of this, you need input output devices. A few examples for input devices would be the mouse, the keyboard, the microphone, Microphone. Output devices would be the monitor, the speakers, or the printer, which is right, right there. 
The network essentially is what you connect your computer to, Wi-Fi, internet, in order to communicate with computers all around the world. It allows you to send and receive data from a computer such as an email, a text message, what have you. Now the bus is a group of wires inside this computer case right here that connect all the hardware components. The main reason for that, well, it needs to pass data from one piece to another. Per our previous example, when you load up Adobe Premiere, you have your secondary storage sending data to your main memory. And then once you save and shut down that application, it sends everything back to the secondary stores to then be retrieved once you open the application back up and then back into the main memory and then so on and so forth. And onto synonyms. We kind of addressed this previously when we were talking about code and instructions and whatnot. And a lot of these groupings that we're going to talk about here, the groups of synonyms, can vary slightly depending on how they're used. But for just like a basic level of knowledge, this is essentially synonyms. You have code, which are computer instructions. You have computer instructions, which is software. You have software, which is a program, also known as an app or application. And now, although I consider code as what you would open in a text editor, you see the entire programming language and that programming language is what you call the code that would be the nitty-gritty of an application and the application would be essentially the package product basically what the consumer would see but you can see how they can be used synonymously and then you'll hear the terms like coding programming software development software engineering or coder programmer, software developer, web developer, uh, software engineer you'll hear those types of terms be interchanged a lot and to Everyone on the outside world, those mean the same exact thing. On the inside world, depending on what your company does and what you're called can mean different things. For example, when you're called a software engineer, generally you work with Java, C++, enterprise level software, that type of stuff. But then when you move over to the people building websites, building web applications, building mobile applications, and not working with those particular languages, people like to call them software developers, but you can see how these would be synonymous. Just know that when someone talks about programming, coding, software development, that's essentially all the same thing. And now the terms machine language or binary or programming language, low level language, high level language, programming paradigms like functional, procedural, imperative, object oriented, that gets a little bit more complex and we're going to discuss that in the next video, computer science terminology part too. So if you're interested in getting a bit deeper into it, I know this video we just kind of went over the basics. A lot of you already knew it, but maybe you learned something new or maybe you didn't know any of it and this is kind of your first break into computer science. If that's the case, definitely consider subscribing, not only for part two of computer science terminology, but also because a lot of my channel revolves around computer science and software engineering. And when you're breaking into this industry, consider me as a friend that's here to help. Until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace. I appreciate your time. Thank mm -hmm. you.